Hey everyone, this is Anna Runyon from ClassyCareerGirl.com and today we have Rachel Corpus who is on Team CCG and she's going to be joining with us. She is our Facebook intern so she helps us manage our very, very large Classy Career Girl Network which has surpassed 5,000. I think, what are we on now? Like 5,600 members or something? We're 5,700 right now. 700. Okay, <laughs> we're growing by the day. Mm -hmm. So for the last six months, she has been helping me with that Facebook group. And I think when you started, we were like maybe at 2,000 or something. When you yeah, started. about a little under 3,000. Yeah, 2, 000, I yeah. remember. <laughs> months, you have helped us grow and you have helped us create this engaging community that I love, that all of the members love. Um, so you. big shout out to you. Thank you for all your help. And I know Corporate Rescue Plan members are just very, very excited to get all of your tips and behind the scenes of how you're doing this, how you're always in there, engaging with everyone and <laughs> making this community great. So we're going to we're gonna pick her brain today and, and learn how <laughs> you know. So thanks for being here, Rachel. Yeah, no problem. I love speaking to you. Awesome. Okay. So I wanted to start out by just kind of asking you what was like the kind of like the biggest thing you've learned just overall in the last six months of managing this group that you may not have realized. I think the number one thing um, is being vulnerable. I know marketing nowadays, um, traditional marketing with advertisements and commercials, it doesn't really get to people now just because the market is filled with advertisements. So um, the most important thing I've learned in Facebook groups is just to be vulnerable and to um, like put yourself out there so other people can trust you and other people can um, yeah get to know about you and you can get to know about them and make connections. Yeah, because you real like the the ones where we get the most response and you get the most response too are like the ones where you're sharing about your your real life and who you are too, right? Yeah, I showed pictures of me at Starbucks, pictures yeah. of my campus, and a lot of people have showed pictures of what they're doing as well, and it's really fun that yeah. way as well. Pictures are great. Always, mm -hmm. always put those pictures in there for sure to get more people to see them. Mm -hmm. Okay, Definitely. so so let me just kind of go through some of the questions that we got in from our members. Um, so Anna said, I love some best practices on regular things you do. Um, like what, what does that weekly posting schedule look like for Classy Career Girl Network? Okay, so we have daily posts um, from, we have Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Um, a lot of them is basically to, for helping and encouraging others. We do set it up, or I set it up um, on an app called Buffer. There's also other apps called Hootsuite too. We can look them up. I schedule them ahead of time. so. Um, it's very easy to manage as well. And uh, these posts are just for daily engagement so people can come back and look back on what they've posted, what others have posted. And it's a really great way to bring in the community together. Yeah. So I think we have, we have like Monday motivation where mm -hmm. people can share like what they're motivated. And yeah. we have like ask for help days. So just mm -hmm. like really like themes of what we wanted the the group to be like and to support each other. And I think before Rachel came on board too, I created more of like, you inspired me to do this, is create more of like mm -hmm. a document that said what our group's all about. And I think that mm -hmm. was really important because then when Rachel joined, she kind of knew, okay, what's allowed, what's not, there are rules. Mm -hmm. And I think that, did that make your life easier too? Yeah, the guidelines, it helped me as well as I think I helped um, the members kind of understand how the community works, especially like we're very encouraging and very supportive. And I think that helps them kind of engage better and like make more connections as well throughout the group. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of like the standard. There's, there's automated posts that, that Rachel's done and put mm -hmm. out there. So I think that's important that you have some use buffer or whatever app you're using is to have the, the scheduled posts. And then I come in every mm -hmm. now and then and just post, um, unscheduled stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so stuff that, you know, we're either blog posts or promoting or, you know, things that are kind of um, going on at Classy Career Girl, as well as just like questions that I have or thoughts that I have or tips mm -hmm. or motivation. So I think it's a good mix. I think in your groups, there needs to be that mix of like the structure so that people know what to expect every single day, every week, there's 
the same thing every week. So people kind of get used to that and excited mm -hmm. for that. And then you also have the mix of like the surprise stuff, right? Yeah, definitely. Questions that aren't just like, it can't just be like so repetitive of the same stuff mm -hmm. over and over again. Um, so I'd recommend kind of like that mix of the two too. Do you agree? Yeah, I think it's important that um, the Facebook group isn't all about just your business. Um, there's, we have mix and mingle Wednesdays, so it's not just about us. It's essentially for our members. So yeah, that's what I've learned as well. Right. Okay. So then Charity asked, how do you get more engagement with your followers? Mm -hmm. You do a good a jo job at this. I always look down and I see there's a bunch of <laughs> underneath your, underneath what mm -hmm. you post. So what do you think is get, helping that? Okay. So it is kind of overwhelming or at first it was overwhelming kind of trying to talk to everyone at the same time and all that stuff. But um, I've set up a schedule. So I have time to really look at everyone's questions, everyone's um, comments, and I go through them and I encourage them as much as possible and give them as advice as possible. Um, I also add in like oh, articles from Classic Career Girl that will help them as well. And you asked about engagement, right? For mm -hmm. people. Okay. Um, what I try to do is, um, I kind of create a sense of trust in the group. So it kind of ties into being vulnerable. Um, if people know how, what I'm doing or how the group works, other people will kind of come in and tell their day, tell how their work is going and all that stuff. So yeah, it's, I think creating trust is a big way to have more people engage. Yeah, I mm -hmm. totally agree. That the, it's a safe place. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to let anyone be mean to you and, yeah. and and come back with anything. And we're really all about it being like feedback and helping helping each other out. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. So what Rachel will do is she'll kind of go through and she'll make sure everyone gets answers responded to. And then if it's something where they're where she doesn't have a blog article to link to, because that's kind of our strategy in the Facebook group, we're mm -hmm. linking to the blog because the blog leads into other things in our business. Um, so that's, that's the whole strategy. And then if Rachel can't find a post to like help whatever the question is, then she'll tag me and then I'll come in and uh, provide an answer or link to a blog that I, <laughs> another blog or something or tag, you know, someone else mm -hmm. in the group that can help out. So that's kind of our, our strategy of, of just making sure people get, get their answers. And then the thing I've realized is when I post, you have to end with a question that's really, really important. So even if I'm posting like a tip, you have to end with a question so you can get engagement and you can get people to start commenting because the more people comment, the more people will see the post. So sometimes when we have like really important posts, I'll ask Rachel, like, we'll just make sure people are commenting on, on it, whether it's just like, say yes if you read mm -hmm. this or just something like <laughs> that you know we just want like a comment because then it goes up into people's feeds and more people see it mm -hmm. so that's that's the whole trick get more comments on everything and, and mm -hmm. questions in there you do you agree yeah i definitely agree and um it's not just facebook groups i've seen um our instagram do that as well um yeah. Other businesses do that in other social media platforms. So that's definitely a good tip for any social media you use. Exactly. So our next question came from Brashana. Bish and she said, how do you not get overwhelmed by mm -hmm. managing the Facebook group? Because I know it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, at first, do you have any secrets? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, at first, it was pretty overwhelming. But um, the apps definitely help. Buffer, Hootsuite. Um, I used before. Um, yeah, that definitely helps a lot. And just having a schedule to answer people's questions, because I know answers come in, our questions come in like at all different times, especially for the Facebook group we have. It's international. Right. So, oops. <laughs> Sorry, our, my video cut That's off. Okay. Okay. Um, it's international, so I'll get answers at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., but I set up a schedule between my classes and between like my work time. So um, I can manage to answer everyone's questions in a timely manner. And how many minutes do you think it takes to like just do the do a quick check in? A uh, quick check in, I'd say ten to fifteen minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important 
to hear you say that because I mean, <laughs> from an outsider perspective, you're just always there. It seems like you're <laughs> always on, mm -hmm. and even from my perspective too, you know, there's all you're always responding to people. But she's, you know, she mm -hmm. has, just has a schedule mm -hmm. of going in there at certain times, so she's not constantly monitoring it, which I think mm -hmm. is extremely important. I know I didn't necessarily have that in the <laughs> when it was just me of Classic mm -hmm. Critical Network, and before that, actually, it was called the Love Your Work and Life Ladies. Uh, mm -hmm. before that and then we transitioned it to classic hurdle network too so mm -hmm. um but yeah it was it's it's definitely good to have someone to bounce questions off of too like rachel mm -hmm. and i will so i think we just did that this yesterday or something yeah. <laughs> you know there's always like do you think this this post goes against our rules like what do you think and we'll kind of bounce bounce questions off each other and then sometimes like yesterday we're like oh I think we need to change our rules because mm -hmm. you know this doesn't seem right anymore so it's always nice to have just one other person that's kind of helping you out whether it's an admin or anything like that too mm -hmm. yeah definitely so, mm -hmm. so that will help you kind of decrease that overwhelm and like another thing to think about is um what the things you don't realize when you start a business of like when people request to join you have to accept them all. So what's your, what is your strategy for not, for not being overwhelmed with that? Like, how are you managing all of the requests that are coming in to join? Um, I usually do them every morning. Um, that's how I do it. Um, what I usually do for, um, having people are accepting requests. I usually like look at their profile pictures, see like if they're not, um, what's it called? <laughs> They're not like, it's not a fake user, you know? Right. Um, I just go through it every morning. Um, it takes me about less than five minutes. Yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. good. So yeah. So it's one time a day. You're just accepting them yeah. all. Mm -hmm. um, and I think during like launch times, I'm helping, I'm in there helping you too, because it's yeah. <laughs> kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I think the rules are really helpful to have too for, we get a lot of promotions and this is what you guys don't see <laughs> we're because rachel's in there i'm sometimes in there just deleting stuff and even john's like oh gosh someone just posted about something you know like <laughs> it's just so promotional and it's it's not even it's like fake stuff like it's not mm -hmm. even check on my website it's just so spammy right yeah. so that stuff mm -hmm. is coming all the time um so what one of the things I think that Rachel does really well is is you'll message them, right? And what are you kind yes. of telling people? Um, I just give them a reminder and um, give them a link to our guidelines saying um, I explain to them what they're not what they've done and um, at where it is in the guidelines. And I also give them a link to our guest posts guidelines as well. So if they want to share their experiences or like their experiences, their stories, like from their business, they can go guest post for Classic Korea Girl. And I tell them that that gives more um, views from that rather than yeah. just like posting it from the Facebook group. So I get a lot of, um, yeah, they're very like grateful for me to show them the guest posting guidelines as well. Oh, awesome. I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. So I think up until about 2000 members, I didn't even have any rules really or guidelines. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I was up until 2000, I just was, I just wanted people to post and I just wanted to engage with them. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really have a very good strategy. So I do think that now what I've learned, I do wish I would have had those rules earlier. I think there was a, a time where um, people were really, and this is before Rachel came on board, people were really taking advantage of taking over my my own group because I didn't have rules they would come in and start doing their own videos and they were promoting their own stuff and because I was so busy I just didn't have time to manage it and I didn't have mm -hmm. these rules and guidelines and so I think that was that's a big takeaway for me is I wish I would have had the group skyrocketed and grew once there was some clear guidelines and once there was someone really managing it and making sure it didn't get Mm -hmm. super promotional and so now if you scroll down that feed I mean it's really just engaging like people are just asking for feedback helping each other and that's what that's what a great Facebook group is really you know mm -hmm. a place yeah. a safe place where you can get help and, and share with each other so I love our group 
Yes, me too. I love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're using Buffer. Mm-hmm. As the one tool you're using, right? Yeah. And then um, the pictures I created, I think we're in PicMonkey, but you can also mm-hmm. use Canva. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes you you create you use our, you use pictures too with what you post too, right? Yeah, I use some of the um, the subscription ones that you use. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of our library. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So now Jennifer has a question. She said, "How do you differentiate yourself from other Facebook groups out there?" And Rachel, I'm gonna have to go with you because I I have to be honest. I'm really not in any other Facebook groups because I have to give so much to our own, right? Mm -hmm, Yeah. Um, But I know you, in your research, started joining other ones, right? Mm -hmm, Yeah, I kind of look through um, other successful ones as well to see, like, how they're doing as well. And um, what I've seen is the um, admins, they really get to know their members and their needs and that's what i try to do i whenever they let's say for the set your weekly goals um post on sunday Mm -hmm. whenever they say oh i'm gonna do this and this i always ask them like oh is there any way i can help or um here's an article to maybe help you out with that so um i think a good way to differentiate yourself is to know your members like they won't go to another group if they don't know the people so I think hmm yeah (laughs) just really get to know the members um and I think it something that differentiates us too is that we're not overly salesy in the group mm -hmm. we don't use the class our number one priority in the classy career girl network is to is community and to create a community and help each other Mm -hmm. and from this is why I'm not in very many is because the ones that I were a part of the person would be extremely active and salesy when they were launching a product Mm -hmm. and then they would like go away kind of thing. And so, um, and it was all based off that one person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that I've really tried to make us different is that this is really a community and like a network. So it's not based around me. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's more about our members and helping each other. And you do a great job like spotlighting, you know, people who are guest contributors Mm -hmm. on, on the website and stuff and really making it more about the community, um, rather than about, it doesn't, it's not about a product we're launching or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, like we do share when that stuff does happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and the one other thing I wanted to share as well is we had a member in corporate rescue plan recently who said, that um, they joined one of our membership sites because I responded to their question in the Facebook group. And that's like, that's what made them mm-hmm. buy is because of that response in the Facebook group. So I think that's key is exactly what Rachel is saying is like, know your members and respond to them. There was a day and this was a, a day we had done like a video series and we were closing the doors to one of our membership sites and there was like 50 comments and I spent that entire day responding to like all of those 50 comments Mm -hmm. in the Facebook group. And I think that just that, like you, you have to respond to your members. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so many other Facebook groups that they'll post something, but then they're not going back in there. People get busy. I mean, Mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur is extremely busy, so I get Mm -hmm. it. But I do think that's what, what has made us differentiate is that you'll get a response. If not from me, from someone else that's probably even more knowledgeable than me, right? <laughs> or Rachel or, you know, <laughs> everyone's just helping each other out. Yeah, what's really interesting, actually, um, the past weeks, I've seen a lot of members actually helping other members as well. So once you get that, like, momentum, yeah, it'll be really fun and, like, a little less stressful because, like, other members are going to be answering other members' questions. Right. So it's kind of less work, kind of like a secret. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It definitely <laughs> is. Trust me, I've had that realization of, mm-hmm. oh, I don't have to be in there 24-7 because other people are responding with better mm-hmm. answers than I, even I would, um, being able to reach out. So you're right, that that does make it. But in the beginning, yeah, you do have to be in there. I mean, almost at least a few times a week, if not daily, because mm-hmm. your group is going to be as excited as you are. So if you're excited and posting in there, and I think that's why everything grew so quickly for us, because I did 
make that a priority in growing that group because I, I love communities. Mm-hmm. So I think that was really important. Okay. So Jennifer Croix said, how do you add value and do it with a streamlined approach? Is that, is that something you want to take or do you want me to take that one, Rachel? Um, let's see. I did answer in the corporate rescue plan. Let me see what I wrote. <laughs> okay. I'll start. Um, and then you can pipe in, but okay. <laughs> so I think for, for us adding value, it comes with, we try and do a lot of, um, stuff that's special for members. And so I'll give like a free PDF that's like only mm-hmm. available for members. Um, actually to join the group immediately when you join, there's like a file that has like our productivity hacks. That's like a completely free PDF, no opt-in or anything. So we just are always trying to like make our members feel special with like free stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we're doing is I'm always trying to like, um, have them be the first to get anything, whether it's like contests or giveaways or, Mm -hmm. or, you know, free, um, PDFs that we've done or eBooks or, um, anything like that. I, I've done a lot of, um, polls in there. So I'll ask them like, okay, I'm creating a new ebook. What, what do you want me to make? And I'll list out like 10 things and then I'll create the thing that got the number one response. So that's a really good way. I'm just, I'm basically giving them what they're asking for and what they want. Mm -hmm. Another way that I've added value is doing Facebook lives in the group. So I'll do a poll. Okay. I'm doing a Facebook live next week you know, what do you want me to do a Facebook mm-hmm. live on? I'll give them uh, topics and then they'll vote on the one. So always, always doing what they're asking for and yeah. what they want and giving them what they want. Um, and then besides obviously the answering questions, pointing them to the right um, blog posts. I know you created like a resource list, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, going off from what you said, I totally agree with the feedback one. Um, to add value, you should know how, like, what value do they want. So I think getting feedback, getting polls, surveys is definitely a good way to um, know what to add and how to add that value. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So any way you can do it. I mean, it's just yeah. asking them what they want and giving it to them. Um, a lot of people just want to be heard. They just want a safe mm-hmm. place and they want to learn and grow together and um, so there's a lot, a lot of stuff you could do to help each other in the, in the Facebook group. The other thing we've done is challenges. Um, so we've done like five day challenges, three day challenges, something to like, we had that free planner and we put together a challenge based mm-hmm. off it. So something to help them like take what they're learning, whatever it is you teach or what your product is, take it and actually use it and apply it and implement it and move forward. Um, so that's something else that, that you can do. Yeah, that's a great way to engage with members as well, just to have a challenge like throughout the whole week so they can always go back and comment. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it kind of leads into Treva's question. So she said she already has a great Facebook group. It's pretty engaged, but how can I encourage members to create posts rather than me creating all the content and posts? Do you Mm -hmm. have any ideas or do you want me to take this one? Um. I already said it just to create trust. Um, I don't know how to explain how, but the number one thing is to create trust within the group. And that's how you kind of let them be able to tell them how they feel, tell them like what their questions are. And yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think, um, I think it's also being very clear on like the rules and guidelines and Mm -hmm. that we want, them to ask questions so like there's a pinned comment that says ask like <clears throat> here's the purpose of our group and here's what this is all about and then even in our guidelines it says this is what we want you to post ask for feedback ask a question you know it's like it's very clear um because yeah. I think that's what holds people back from Facebook groups especially now is um people are just worried about like what's right mm-hmm. and what can I post and what can I post so I would create a pinned post at the top of your Facebook group yeah kind of tells people what, what you're looking for and what the purpose of the group is. And then I'm, I try and go in there. I need, probably need to do this today cause I haven't done this in a while <laughs> and do a post that just kind of welcomes new people. Not specifically. I used to welcome everyone that joined, um, group got too big and I couldn't do that anymore. But I think that's important when you're starting is to welcome new members. 
Mm-hmm. Um, now I just say welcome, but I'm not like tagging everyone. Like I, used yeah. <laughs> I used to do that for a long time. Um, but I do think it's important to welcome, welcome new members and then just kind of give them a link to the guidelines and mm-hmm. like what, what you can post, like what we want to see. I think that's mm-hmm. important Treva, to kind of remind people, these are the types of questions that I want you, I want to see in here. Um, and then just when people do, they see you responding and yeah. then, I'm in a Facebook group right now. I asked a question and I never got a response. So I'm never going to answer a question, mm-hmm. ask a question again, right? It's in a different group I'm in. Um, and if I saw someone else ask a question and they didn't get a response, I wouldn't ask a question. So people are watching. People are really watching to see how other people are getting responded to. And if they see that there's five responses on someone's question, then they'll be more likely to start a new topic themselves. Um, but yeah, it's exactly what you said. It has to be like that, that safe place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. If you don't have, for me, if I don't have time to comment beforehand, I'll just like everyone's comments. And then later on when I do have time, I go back in. So they'll see that I've at least seen their question and I try to answer them within 24 hours. Yes. That's awesome. That's kind of like my time frame. Awesome. Okay. Um, Oh, the other way to get people to create new posts is to do that challenge we were talking about. But in order to participate in the challenge, you have to like post a new, a new post. Mm -hmm. So we did that with my startup story where it was like a seven day challenge. And each day we pointed them to the Facebook group to share a writing prompt. Like we gave them Mm -hmm. a prompt, like I am at my best when, and then they, um, they were supposed to start a post themselves with that and use that hashtag. So that's an idea mm-hmm. to get people started posting themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stephanie says, I'm starting to build my group tips for getting started. Um, Rachel, you weren't here when, when we started. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably have to take this one. So mm-hmm. I think, um, so for me getting started, I think the most important thing is it doesn't matter how many people are there you really have to treat everyone like it's our 5,500 member group. Like you have to devote a lot of time and attention into each, each member and make it a fun place to hang out, make it a safe place, build that trust, build that relationship. Cause that's what Facebook groups are, are all about. We haven't really touched on like, why are we building this Facebook group? But that's really what it's all about is to let people know that you're a real person. Mm-hmm. That when it co- does come time to make your product or service available, and you're ready to make that offer that they already know, like, and trust you, you know? Um, so they feel comfortable about that. And so I think that's, that's the most important part is start building that group of people that maybe are enjoying your content or reading your content, but they're seeing you now as a real person. You're not just this person with a business profile or this Mm -hmm. person running a company, but you're actually, you really care, you know, you really, really care about them. So Mm -hmm. The most important thing is to start. Don't overthink it. Just start growing that group and then try and bring in everything you do in your business to that group. So like Mm -hmm. we have, you know, an autoresponder that goes out that invites people, everyone new on our email list gets an invite to our group. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're always trying to, you know, whether it's like if you sign up for a webinar, you get an invite to a group or you land on a thank you page that invites you to the group. Like everything, every a few times a week on Instagram, we're pointing to the group. Um, you know, on Facebook, we have an automatic post that's going out every week that's pointing to the group and Twitter. So we're just, everything is focused on building that group because that's really where people can get to know us and know, and get to know the community better and then move to that next phase. Mm -hmm. So, um, those are my tips to get started. It's really just, making it, making it your own and kind of having that vision for your business and vision for your group of what you want it to be. So say it's 5,000 members, like what do you want that to look like? And then set that vision so your members kind of know where you're going. And like I said, your members are going to be as excited as you are. So if you love the group and you're excited about it, I think that's why the group, our group has grown so much because now we're both so excited about it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's when, that's when growth happens is when, you get excited about the group and the members as well do, and they get to know you better too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So do you have anything else to add, Rachel, that you've learned? So tips for anyone starting or growing the Facebook group, what would you tell them? Your last words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I think just to be really excited. Um, like what you said, um, I want to be able to answer everyone's questions in a timely manner or write as good as content as I would if I wasn't excited. So just be excited and um, good luck, everyone. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Let, let us know how it goes and share yeah. with us your success and um, you know, share it with, share it with us in the wins that you have. We have like a wins every week in the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. so you can, you can share that. Thank you, Rachel, for being here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you guys can find her in the Classy Career Girl Network Facebook group. Um, as you have seen, she's in there all the time. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.